Uh, my name's Andy, I'm a uh, product manager at Sky, and over the last few years I've, I've done many roles. I've been a BA on a water school project, and I've uh, been a product owner, I've been a scrum master uh, before moving over to the dark side into the business, uh, now as a product manager. And what I wanted to do was um, talk to you a little bit about uh, a situation we're in when we move from an agile way of working to, sorry, move from a water way of working. Um, to an agile way of working and introduced uh, an agile culture um, and started using agile tools and methodologies. Um, but before I go into anything in any detail, I wanted to make a big caveat, uh, and that was that I'd like to take all the credit for all the ideas that I'm going to present tonight, um, but it's not really down to me, it's down to all the people I work with and their skill and their experience and their intelligence. So, really, this presentation is a big shout out to all the people I work with over the years. Um, and I wanted to basically focus uh, on this period, it was about six years ago, um, and it was, just to give you a little bit of a background on the projects I was working on, um, it was uh, a website built, um, it was replacing one of the Sky's biggest websites, um, it had about six million uh, page impressions a day, um, so it's fairly big, um, and it involved a content management system as well, so about 48 of these. Um, and journalists who really write articles that would go up on this website. Um, so that's a little bit about the context. And what I, want, what I wanted to do was basically uh, pick up individual bits and pieces that um, weren't necessarily kind of the core of the sort of agile trans transition that we're doing, but there were particular things that I thought were particularly cool or particularly interesting um, that I remember. And um, yeah, I'm going to take it from there. So. The first uh, thing I wanted to mention is that um, to structure the bit at the end where you ask me questions, um, I wanted to get you to vote um, at various points throughout the presentation um, so that we can kind of structure the Q&A session on the things that are most popular. So it'll all be obvious, you only need to use your hands um, and I'll, uh, I'll mention it when we get to the various points. So, um, I've mentioned various individual things we've done, individual techniques, um, but what was the result? So this was geared to one particular Greenfield project, um, and it was really successful, which is, I guess, why I'm here today, uh, because Sky adopted an agile way of working. Um, it was really, really successful. It's basically, from the start of development to beta, uh, took 17 weeks. There was a bit of design done beforehand, 17 weeks wasn't very much. It was Sky's third largest website, uh, and that included all the development. It included the development of the bespoke um, CMS. Uh, it included contractual arrangements um, to basically uh, work in a new data center. It included the purchase of all the hardware, so the web servers. Um, there was a massive amount of work that happened in those 17 weeks, um, and that basically uh, was immediately obvious uh, what a uh, difference in terms of success uh, that was to our previous way of working. Um, so basically since then, Sky has essentially tried to be as agile as it can, um, and this has you know, spread right across Sky, which I think um, has benefited it uh, immensely. Um, so that was the result, um, and I was thinking, well, actually, as I mentioned before, right, you know, I used to be in technology role, and now I've kind of moved over to the business side of things. And I thought, well, actually, that's all very well, um, but what does that mean to me? And what does that mean to me in a new role, uh, in my new business role? And what would that mean to me if I was to do something completely different, if I was to become a teacher or a policeman? What has this taught me? And um, I was kind of thinking back to what the various people were thinking when they came up with the Agile Manifesto, and what was their thought process? And I think. I think the biggest takeaway is that um, these kind of people weren't satisfied with the status quo and they always sought out to improve themselves and improve things. Um, and in my new role, um, in a product management role, um, this again is very important. Um, and what I'd like to say is there's a huge amount of things that can help you. Um, so in terms of product management, uh, a lot of you will know who this chap is. He's a guy called Edward Deming. Uh, he's very famous in the business world. Um, and in the Agile world because uh, after the Second World War he went over to Japan to help them rebuild their manufacturing industry 
Um, so a lot of lean techniques come from this chat. Um, and a lot of business product management techniques come from this chat. Um, and the whole movement is called the Lean Startup Movement, which is all around um, building things quickly, getting things to market very quickly, and um, basically changing um, the product uh, based on rapid user testing and user feedback from live products. Um, so that's kind of something I'm focusing on at the moment. Um, and it's just, I guess it's just to say that you know, there's so much uh, information out there now. Um, there's so many blog, blogs being written, there's so many books out there, there's so many events such as this. Especially if you live in London, you're really lucky because there's, there's just so many resources available to you. Um, but I think despite all this stuff, um, you still need <laughs> the right environment. Um, and you need people in your organisation that are going to support and nurture you. And you need a boss that isn't like David Brent. You need someone um, who's got you know, ideas of their own, who will support your ideas. And in my example, my boss's boss is really, really keen on user testing and has kind of hired people to that effect and really, really helps push things forward. So um, you basically need a like-minded people in your organisation and that is something fantastically important. So, um, that kind of comes to the, the end of the bits where I speak at you and the start of the bits where you start to uh, ask questions or pose your own ideas and experiences. But please bear in mind um, that breaking the rules was the most popular and hiring the right people was the second most popular. So, just being democratic would be great if we could kind of have some questions in those two areas. But obviously, feel free to ask any others as well. Okay, well, I want to start with this uh, 13 week project that was very successful. Mm -hmm. There must be something that we wrong with to do with a big problem that we described as you know, the um, There were lots of things that uh, were massively challenging, yeah. Um, so the big thing that nearly went awfully wrong was we were. Um, we didn't want to get caught up in the bureaucracy of um, the existing. Uh, data center which was owned by Sky um, and we to do that we basically used a third party data center and brought in our own equipment but the lead time involved with that relatively long uh, with contracts and money exchange changing hands etc etc uh, and that nearly destroyed us um, so basically the, the kind of scrum master person that was, was also an agile cult coach who was trying to resolve that was just working ridiculously crazy hours. Um, developers were getting involved in cabling, etc., etc. So that nearly went uh, very wrong, but it didn't, unfortunately. Anything else? Um, I was going to say, when you were not moved away from your content management system, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, um, how did you? Would, so the, you must have got out of any other dependencies, any other sort of company reasons that that could be done. Yeah. Now, how how <laughs> do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to take notes. So that basically came from uh, someone, someone very senior within technology that was new to the company, was extremely bullshit, uh, and basically just made, let it happen or made it happen. Um, so we had support from one particular individual um, who basically said, well, if these guys don't want to do it, they're not doing it. Um, and that was, that, the reason he did that was to initiate the change. Did he have to do any um, kind of socks to the, the other the rest of the business? So had he any bridges so that in the new content management system that would be a way of, in the future, making content reviews in other ways? Um, not in that particular scenario, um, because that, was, that particular website um, didn't have feeds from other websites. It actually fed other websites, but it didn't have any incoming feeds. Um, or it, it did have one, but it was very limited. Um, so that was just simply one feed that was exposed. Um, and that did originate from the, from the other content management system. Um, but the reason... I think the reason it succeeded was because it was a greenfield project, so there wasn't, you didn't have to run two CMSs in parallel. Uh, and I think if it did, that would be make it a lot more difficult. But the rest of the business was running two CMSs in parallel. No. So the rest of the business was 
progress the business at that particular point in time was running the old CMS. Um, and Sky likes to basically, I guess, rebrand and rebuild web websites on a regular basis. So as that happened, that was an opportunity to basically revisit that on another project. So if, I don't know, for example, Sky News was to decide it wanted to rebuild, um, at that point they would um, basically disuse their old system and create their own. Um, so that's what everyone was creating their own. That's what it wasn't like. No, everyone, well, um, I'd say the major areas were creating their own, um, but that's kind of oversimplifying things slightly. Um, so, some, depending on the website, so for example, uh, I was on a website that basically built, um, it was the website for the major Sky channels, so Sky One, Sky News, etc. Et and because the way the editors work was very, worked was very similar, we just built one CMS that serviced four websites. Um, other big ones like uh, Sky News had its own CMS. They built their own CMS because, uh, or because they worked in a particular way, and the editorial team obviously was massive. Um, other projects that were really small, um, and maybe had only one or two editors working on them, actually went for off-the-shelf solutions. And uh, in, those, in that particular circumstance, you know, small build, cheap build. Um, I think. I can't remember the name of the CMS they used. I think it was open source, but um, that worked for them. So every project has the ability to choose their own, but they would um, sometimes they would reuse components from others. I think one of the things about it is that we understand the cost of delay. I mean, if you look at, for example, Sky Sports, Sky News, they've got to update themselves second by second. You know, someone scores, if they know on the Sky website, trust me, they're on the BBC website instead. Compare that to someone who's doing a remote record online in Egypt. You know, a much different scenario for how you put the content on. So if you're trying to make one solution be the only solution for the entire organization, if it's cheaper to support, which is why it's not going to be a solution, right? But actually the cost of delay for this standard solution for this kind of use thing, this kind of sports thing, right? for example, I mean massive they're going to lose a huge amount of value for traffic, but also yeah. the cost is cheaper than do this other thing. But my experience from the FT which is from as well as that if you leave it to each individual team they'll all decide you should touch that very CMS because they probably need this requirement and it's quicker and it's easier and the worst of it. So you look at it from the team perspective, it's a good case. So you end up with lots of fast delivery and end up really down the line with 22 CMS and you should have to go up to. And then the final service comes around the CMS and then the people can come to the team. But this is the question is then how do you actually quantify and monetize the cost of delay in dealing with a separate single solution that's no good for anybody versus having these multiple independent systems that cost a lot of money and are very noticeable on the budget line, whereas the cost of delay is actually doing the work and the size size is very much different. So it's actually making sure you're not just doing it, but showing the numbers and showing the numbers in the way that the business understands. In, I don't know, in my experience, it's not a black and white answer. You don't go for one or the other, it's a very grey area. Um, and I don't know, for Sky, it's, it's works that, um, well, some have gone bespoke, some of the big, bigger projects have gone bespoke, uh, and then others have basically taken an off the shelf solution. And when they've taken an off the shelf solution, it's generally been the, the same as off the shelf solution. And a couple of hands up over there. <laughs> Um, no, that was the plan of the team itself. Uh, so in that first example, the Greenfield project example, the, design, the desire to go to spoke um, was the idea of the team, uh, but that was supported by... I'm talking in general, agile champion in the company. Okay. So you talked about not being top down, but bottom up, yeah. or both actually. Yeah. So I understand the bottom up story. So how did agile get embraced by the exam? Okay, I think that was down to luck, actually. Um, that was down to, basically, the situation was that someone very senior came from another company into Sky, um, and they saw things that weren't working, and they wanted to make a big change, um, and that's why it happened. I think if it wasn't down to that one individual, then it may have taken several years later. Okay. Yeah. Just a quick question. You said, yeah, that Sky is embraced. That's the only 
sort of the three website and the three areas of branding as marketing? Um, not really. <laughs> In some ways it is. It, it, because I have such a massive organisation, it's difficult. In some departments it does, in some departments it doesn't. What do you mean the lean approach? You're not devastating the success you have. Did that part of start to question if they be leaner or come to you for a or was it just the development teams that were showing the advice between each other? So it's very different for different departments. So I think generally with marketing, um, not really picked on that so much because they, they need very specific dates and they need to plan things quite far in advance for a huge marketing campaign, especially if it involves TV. Um, but some of the other areas, so definitely the editorial areas have embraced it. Um, I guess I guess the areas that have actually been closest to the technology that's been produced have been the ones to embrace it quickest and that's what I mean for obvious reasons. Okay. Okay. What are the key things you um, one of the key things I think is is basically to kind of instill this vision or this culture of saying that we are going to release often, and if we build a very very simple version of the feature and test how it works, it doesn't matter that we don't have to build this because we can have those in a week, two weeks, or three weeks' time. Um, then we get to test that and uh, we'll see whether it works. But that's kind of one version of Simple where basically you're, you're not building as much. The other version of Simple is to try and think of things in a more abstract way. Um, so, especially when people have been in an organisation for a long time, uh, there's lots of kind of, I guess, industry or company jargon and company ways of dealing with things. Um, so we get that a lot with the TV channels and the way things are groups and genres, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, sometimes you just kind of need to sort of... And this is down to product people, to business analysts. It's kind of their job to really uh, think of things in an agile way, not an agile way, in an abstract way, um, and kind of use their own intelligence to, to basically come up with elegant solutions rather than just kind of taking what the stakeholders ask for. So there's two approaches. One is to use often, and then one is to have good product owners and business analysts. 